raw beginner in uh, lathes, or particularly this particular model of lathe, I'd like to give you a rundown of what all the different knobs and levers do. And we'll start with the motor, which is in this, in this particular lathe, located right down the bottom here. It uses partly uses the weight of the motor itself to provide tension on the big wheel. And you've got uh, two pulleys you can change positions to alter the speed of the main spindle, which is driving the, the uh, chuck. And of course, you've got a table on the front here which tells you how many RPM it will do, depending on what positions you've uh, got those pulleys in. So that's your main uh, speed. Uh, now you do have an alternative for getting very, very low speeds called back gear, and that's a, 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 obtained by turning this lever and selecting the position back here. And also you have to pull this lever off to the left side, which I won't do right now, it's sticking, but there it goes. So that goes to that position for back gear, and it goes back to this position for a normal speed. And that gives you a much, much lower speed than back gear. Um, you can see it here in the selections that I have that are labeled um, AD, you get down to 38 RPM, whereas in a normal gear position you can get up to 1300 RPM, so it gives you a big range of speeds. So that's the main part of uh, the system. Um, perhaps we'll go now to the bed of the lathe, of course there's parts of the bed, and uh, the part you can move backwards and forwards is called the apron. And on the apron you have a cross slide that will move your, for your tool uh, laterally across the lathe bed from front to back. But you also have another one here which is for fine control of forwards and backwards. So it does, in this position, does the same thing as this big wheel which moves the whole apron back and forth. I've stopped the video here so that I can make an additional comment because there are three names used for this part of the lathe. Uh, it is often referred to as either the, the carriage, the saddle or the apron. The saddle is actually the part that slides directly on the bed of the lathe and sitting on top of that are the cross slide and compound slide which make up the carriage. Uh, they carry the tool on the top of the, of the uh, whole system. And then the part that hangs down the front where you've got the clutch and the big wheel for moving longitudinal movement, etc. That part is actually this, the apron that hangs down like an apron across the front. So those are the three parts and uh, in different countries people refer to the whole thing loosely as either the carriage, the saddle or the apron. Apron back and forth. This one, instead of moving the apron, um, just moves this, this uh, the tool holder. This is called the compound slide because you can undo two Allen keys uh, screws at the back, grub screws, and alter the angle that this is on. So you can actually drive the tool along a particular angle to make it taper. In this illustration you can see the compound slide set at an angle for turning a cone shape rather than a cylinder. Um, when you're doing this you can actually lock the apron using this nut here you just put a tool on that and um, tighten it up and it'll stop the apron from moving and then you rely entirely on using this handle to move the tool and the, along the length of the uh, lathe bed. Um, and at the end we have the tail stock. It has a tapered hole in it called a morse taper, morse taper number three, and you put your uh, drill chuck in the back of there or a centre, dead centre or a live centre. Now this whole unit can slide backwards or forwards and once it's in position you lock it into place with this lock lever and then you can drive your um, drill head forwards with this movement here. It'll go forwards two inches. When you unwind it, it pops the chuck out. It's uh, got a, it has a pin down the centre which pushes the chuck out when you un un unwind it. So it makes it quite easy to remove the chuck, the drill chuck. I haven't got the um, the main uh, chuck on here. You've got it. We've got a three-jaw self-centering chuck, a four-jaw chuck for holding uh, asymmetrical objects, and I've also got a collet drive for holding very tiny objects very securely in a centered position. Um, and uh, also you can do a dog drive. I put all these parts away. Um, but you can you can put another center in this end and a center in that end and hold the piece of work between the two centers. Um, so those will, those features will come up later. Now, on the bottom here we have the lead screw, which is here, and this drives the whole apron along if you want to, by 
selecting the neutral position for this gear lever here and you, when you lift this up a half nut comes up against the lead screw and connects the whole apron to the lead screw so that uh, the lead screw can move the the apron along the bed of the lathe backwards or forwards. Whether it goes backwards or forwards is determined by this lever which is which can be in a neutral position so that the lead screw is just turned off when you're not using it or you can push the lever in and up and it engages forwards motion which is actually driving the tool towards the um, chuck or you can put it in the opposite direction here get reverse direction and make the tool move away from the chuck. So what are all these other gears for? Um, these are your gear train which determines how fast the lead screw is going to be turning. So it's quite important. It's normally uh, it's supposed to be set up with a 40 tooth gear in the central position. The stud is called the stud gear and it's supposed to give you metric threads. And here we have a table showing the amount of pitch you'll get on your metric threads. Um, so if you have an A1 position you're going to get 1.7 millimeters per turn. And if you go right down to the bottom to E8 you get uh, 0.06 mill millimeters per turn of the chuck. So each time the chuck turns around one one turn with, with the work on it, uh, your um, apron is going to move ahead 0 0.06 mil, uh, millimeters, and that makes you a thread with a pitch of 0 0.06. Um, now to select all these different different uh, pitches, you've also got this uh, gearbox, which has one, two, three, four, five positions with the left lever, and eight positions with the right one. Five eighths of forty, so it's a forty gear, forty speed gearbox. And that allows you to select these different um, pitches that you're going to use for making threads. But actually by putting a different number of teeth in the stud gear, uh, you can use a 48 tooth gear or a 56 tooth gear or whatever, and you can make it do non-metric threads. At the top of the image you see the two levers that uh, select the gear position to use. You've got the gear train connecting in on the left side and the output going to the lead screw on the right side. And that's, that tricky part is all done by calculating these gear ratios, counting the number of teeth on each gear in this whole gear train to figure out how fast it's going to move. And this has the two gears connected together in the middle there uh, for converting to metric. If you take the number of millimetres per inch, that's 25.4, and divide it by 4, you get 63. And you'll notice that one of those wheels has 63 teeth. Uh, and that gives you your, your metric conversion. Um, so by playing around with those we can make it go to English, uh, Imperial, old Imperial system. And on the copper plate here we see the, uh, the old Imperial um, threads per inch, which the Americans will like. And on the next panel, the silver one, we see the pictures that you can get in millimetres and to do that to actually to get all, uh, all of these readings you have to start changing the stud gear which is fairly simple to do actually to, to select the right uh, number of millimetres per turn. So let's see if we missed anything up in terms of major control. Yes we didn't talk completely about this section here on the apron. We've, I've got it in a neutral position at the moment which is what you use if you're using the um, half nut to connect directly onto the lead screw. However there's an alternative method uh, and that is in the upwards position there. Um, that's automated movement of the apron along the bed. Uh, actually I've got to set up to go really fast. Let's see what happens when I turn it on. Um, so this has a clutch with it. This knob here is a clutch so you can turn it off or on. So with this setup of the gear train you can see it's the lead screw is really just flying around far more faster than you'd normally have it uh, but this will at least uh, exaggerate the demonstration so you can really see what happens so uh, you can see now that we've got a power feed going and the um, apron or um, saddle as it's more commonly called is uh, moving along quite fast and you can release the clutch by turning to the left like that and that'll, that'll stop the movement. Alternatively, you can move the selector gear down to the bottom position, and now we'll have power feed on the cross drive. So we'll see when we turn it back on, the lead screw's flying around again. We'll turn the clutch. So now we, as we 
engage that clutch, we see the cross slide automatically moving across with this handle turning around, and you can actually see the movement since it's going so fast. I just set the lead screw in the fastest possible position with the, this particular gear train, um, and it does a half a centimetre per turn. So that seems to be the longest pitch I can do, uh, unless I can alter the gear train and speed up the um, lead screw that way so I can make an even longer pitch because I want to make an Archimedes screw. After that I want a really long pitch.